of Inheritance Season 1, The Recapping. So, Neve the Crusty Druid, Iris the Emo Half-Elf, Freya the Manic Pixie Browter Noble, and Yorg of the Much Constitution Points are all headed up into the spooky wildlands to cleanse a well. First stop is the town of Hawk. In the night, goblins steal the blacksmith's daughter. The party give chase, stopping only to play frisbee with a cute baby orc and wind up at a big-ass tomb temple thing. Neve walks into a door, Freya sets off an obvious trap, they convince the goblins to unionise or something and kill off the massive bugbear that's been pushing them around. But where's the blacksmith's daughter? She's about to be sacrificed in an evil ritual! The party puts paid to that pretty damn quick and discover a secret room that only the worthy can enter, which it turns out is Yorg and one random goblin. He's cool. Turns out this is the tomb of Lancelot, an old Estalian god, and Yorg finds the axe of Lancelot, which has fun on-screen game effects. But Yorg is also talking to another Estalian god, Elaine, the god whose symbol he got tramp-stamped onto his body. So now he can chat to Elaine and Lancelot. Remember that, kids. It'll come up in the test later. The party find a letter on one of the cultists describing future evil plans. The Hallow of Elaine is going to be desecrated at the full wolf moon in the name of the dark god Mordred, and somebody called Corcarel is calling the shots. Well, where the hell is the Hallow of Elaine? What they could really do with is a map, and Freya knows where she can get one. She sneaks back home to try and steal her family's map of the Wildlands. She gets caught by her sister and given a lecture about family and responsibility, which amazingly works. She decides to give this arranged marriage thing a chance and meets her husband-to-be. This is Lord Tyndall of Crassos. He's short, well-dressed, endlessly charming, just a really nice guy. Unfortunately, with him comes attached Sir Darius, who is ten feet tall, played by Jason Statham, and in full plate mail at all times. As well as with Lord Tyndall. At all times. Freya fakes her death terribly and flips out the castle window, heading back to Hawk to meet with the party. Mean the while, the others went and cleaned up a minor well. Iris got more powers and another tattoo from another magic stone, and they met a fey creature who gave them pixie dust, and Neve was gifted wild shape by a grateful fey elder for clearing the well. They have probably had the last good night's sleep they're going to get for the rest of the campaign. The next morning, Sir Darius and Lord Tyndall turn up with a mess of guards. There's a fight, everyone bugs out, and Neve wild shapes into a horse and kidnaps Lord Tyndall, yo. Once the dust is cleared and they're on the other side of a very burnt bridge, they offer Tyndall his freedom, but he seems kind of okay with being kidnapped. Meanwhile, Freya has vanished into the woods and into the hands of an orc raiding party. When she realises the stew they've been feeding her is her prize horse, she vows revenge. With the help of another captive, explorer Mina Castle, and some ogres who come crashing through the trees shouting, Practice! She steals the orc's boat and escapes, restyling herself as Captain Lucille, pirate princess. Somewhere across the forest, the rest of the party find a gun-running group, or, I guess, crossbow-running group, for some war that honestly I don't think is going to be that important to our story. They meet Tutapek, an unreasonably ripped lizardfolk prince who is allergic to shirts or something, and channeling Robin Hood in a big way. Tutapek knows who Corcarel is. She's the sister of the evil queen who banished him. He agrees to meet at the Hallow of Elaine to help fight against her. Now, by this point, we haven't heard nearly enough about our tragic orphan emo elf, so the party decide to go to a nearby standing stone and see if Iris can learn anything more about the weird hallucination she gets every time she touches one. But it turns out they're not the only ones with an interest in these big old rocks. When they get there, they run into another sorcerer who goes all Highlander on Iris and tries to wipe out the party. Luckily, who should turn up at that very moment but Captain Lucille, who puts an arrow through the sorcerer's face and puts out Yorg, who is very much on fire. Iris goes to try and save the sorcerer, but when she touches her, she sucks one of her tattoos onto her body, along with a new spell. Level up! Also, this very much kills her. Iris basically killed her by taking her magic. Remember that, kids. It'll come up in the test later. 
Not content with murder and soul crimes, Iris loots the dead body and takes her cool occult spellbook. We wind up to the finale as the party approach the major well source. This place is a mess. The water is this toxic black sludge, the trees have become horrific ent beasts, and the only wildlife is evil-aligned mosquitoes. Like there's any other kind. Neve rolls up her sleeves and gets to work with her well cleansing ritual while the rest of the party fight off the flora and fauna. Jorg gets whomping willowed and Freya does some impressive backflipping. Iris casts a great pair of protective angel wings around Neve, which annoys the GM no end. At the end of the fight, Neve cleanses the well, blasting the poison away and aligns the well to peace, which basically turns it into a giant healing potion. Mission accomplished, gang! Time to go home for tea and medals! Well, almost. Except that the thing that had been poisoning this well, and the whole water system, was half of a very big, very dead dragon. And now the healing powers of this newly blessed well have brought it back to life. A great wing rears up out of the water, and a giant black dragon looms over the party, and... That's the end of season one. 